Welcome back, Rebel, to Ariel Division 5C. I am Ladeus, and we are going to recap Week 1. So let's just jump right into Dark Souls and Children of Hell Pit and their 1 1 tie. So we're going to look at the statistics off the bat. Dark Souls. Oh, and the Children of Hell Pit both had a pass. I enjoy that stuff. Um, Hell Pit had three in KOs inflicted and three injuries inflicted. So they got quite removed. Uh, four casualties sustained. Good grief. That's odd since they got removed less. They have more casualties. I guess they must have hurt themselves. Um, let's take a look at the dice rolls, see if we can tell any tale of the tape, as it were. Dark Souls. Hmm. Pretty bad armor breaks right there, considering you should be having some armor 8 on this team. Uh, Dodge is not so great. Dauntless failing quite often. That's, that's sad. Um... Going up against the trolls, if I'm not mistaken, you only need to roll a three or better, so that should be much better. But cast, uh, catching, passing, casualties, going for it, so you only did one, but hey. And picking up the ball, which is always a pain in the neck. Let's take a look at uh, your block dice. Uh, 13 pals and 14 skulls, not so great. 11 both downs, that's actually pretty good for you, considering you have wrestle and block. Um, the defender stumbles. It's a real pain in the neck. That's really a push. So, 44 pushes, unless you're doing these against trolls. Or the few Skaven that's on the team. So, yeah, I don't know. 50-50 on that one. Probably This is probably just as annoying as this one is a dangerous to you. Not bad. Let's go back to the dice and check out how the Hell Pit did. Their armor held quite well, considering Skaven and Goblins. Uh, dodging did pretty good. Catching, not so great. Um, were you catching in a lot of tackle zones? Uh, injuries did well. Pick up, that's great. Passing, I'm going to assume with four passes. There was some throwing of Goblins. Uh, 13 really stupid pa uh, checks that pass. That's excellent, considering it's a 1 in 6 failure. Uh, throwing, throwing a bomb, I, I guess you had a, a star player. Excellent. That might have been one of the casualties he sustained. They wouldn't have shown up on the, on the uh, tape, as it were. And then your block dice. Not too many skulls at all, so... As long as these didn't get you into trouble, that's pretty good. And considering you actually chose a both down, I'm going to take a look at that. Children of Hell Pit. I know you have at least two with block. Let me No, I'm wrong. You only have one. Uh, but you do have a blitzer now. Oh, no, I'm right. The blitzers. Yeah, two with block there. The Mighty Blow and Claw, that's going to probably... People are going to hate that very soon. I just got to look at his statistics. I'm trying to look to see if they've got any... Maybe throw teammate doesn't count as a pass, or maybe you didn't do it, but either way. Five matches. So yeah, team looks in pretty good health. And let's take a look at... Your opponent, Mr. Christie's Bretonians, strength up on the Blitzer. Nice. Uh, that Blitzer is going to be a real uh, pain in the neck for people to face against. Elves, goblins, anybody who relies on dodge. Oh, and a dirty player. How about that? All right. Not bad for a 1-1 one, one, uh, tie. Spits and Swallows loses theirs to the Swords. A 1-0. Um, there's another Mighty Blow Claw piece. And the Beast of Nurgle got the MVP. So he's just one injury away from leveling up again. 
he did have a death. Hopefully, it was not a Pestigore. So, five injuries inflicted in one KO versus four injuries in two KOs, which would normally be pretty balanced, except there's the one kill. Um, they have a successful pass, so good on them. All right. And let's take a look at the dice rolls. So, Spits and Swallows, the Nurgle, their beast behaved, and their regeneration did not. Dodging two, f two out of three, that's pretty basic. I mean, that's not bad. Wake up calls, 50-50, which makes sense. Only picked up the ball once. So, not bad all around. And how did your blocks go? Well, 19 skulls versus 13 pals. An even number of both down and defender stumbles. That's becoming a bit of a, a, a pattern there. The last team we looked at did that. So, I'm assuming that just whenever they knocked you down, it got they got luckier on the injuries. Though, the beast with two backs having double skull and both down, that had to be a real pain in the neck. Let's go back to the swords. Alright, so Foul Appearance just showed up and did some work. Holy cow. Six uh, failures out of 21. That's pretty good. Um, armor held well. Tentacles were a pain in the neck like usual. Dodging, you did well with that. Injuries and casualties weighed against you. So you try to pick up the ball a lot, apparently, and, I mean, two fails out of six pickups is not bad. One pass, one going for it. Looks like your uh, your Minotaur was well-behaved. However, loner rolls worked against you, so I'm hoping those were greed rolls you were doing and not desperately needing them. Block dice, pretty balanced on the pals versus skulls. Uh... Both downs working probably against you. I doubt you have too many uh, too many pieces with block. Let's take a quick look. There's the swords. There we are. So two block pieces here and then a chaos warrior. So yeah, definitely believe you told me you paid the iron price as it were. Got some agility busted pieces in a Chaos Warrior. I think that's actually kind of a pain in the neck. Because you want to hand off the ball to them so they can score. Uh, this dude being agility busted is no big deal. He's going to become a blitzer or fouling piece or sacrifice to, you know, the altar of death. Yep. That is probably a very painful loss to get that much damage and still come out 0-1. Spooky Action Atavistic, which he told me a little bit in the last comments, and I looked it up. That is something to do with traits that are no longer needed to show up in birth. Like, if a human shows up with a tail, that is a atavistic trait. And his agility up werewolf got the MVP, so he's one lazy pass or some kind of goofiness away from leveling up. Speaking of which, the pen is mightier. Did have two passes. I always enjoy those, by the way. I mean, they are dwarves. Uh, not dwarves. They're elves, so makes sense there'd be a few. Uh, both of them blocking 43 even. Both of them two KOs and one injury inflicted. So, that's kind of funny to me. Necromatic and Dark Elves going at it. So, spooky action atavistic. Let's see how you did. Regeneration did its job when it was needed. Wake-ups, however, did not. So, KO players stayed, stayed napping. Your injuries were... I don't know if that's high or not, but that's three failed injuries has got to be a real pain in the neck uh, pickups no problem armor stood strong only uh, 
Only eight failures out of 36. Uh, dodging 50-50, that's, that's not great. Uh, GFIs probably pounded you a little bit there, it looks like. Uh, but that's what you get when you have movement for everything. And how did you do in the block world? Uh, 18 skulls versus 11 pals. That's got to be a real pain in the neck. Uh, and I doubt you have too much uh, block to go wrong with these both downs. So I feel like probably your blocking dice worked against you a bit. Man, there's two of them both downs right off the bat. But you chose that one, so... must have... I'm a, you must have more block than I'm remembering. And there you go. There's a three die block that worked very much against you. Let's take a look at the Dark Elves. So, dodging seven failures, that's not the worst. Um, armor's 50 50, that's pretty bad. Catching 50 50, that's pretty bad. Uh, you're going for it. Worked out in your favor. Only one injury. That's excellent, actually. And it looks like your people are sleeping as well as his were. Pick up some pass worked well. Actually used to jump up efficiently. So there's a uh, witch elf doing what she needed to do. And then your blocks. For having 40... What was it? 43 successful blocks. That was... Very odd there. I guess you must have got uh, both downs exactly when you needed them by the players you needed them to have. Let's take a look at those teams real quick. The pen is mightier. So the witch elf is out for at least a game. Let's see what kind of injury that is. Just to pinch nerves, so she'll be back. No problem. Frank Herbert with his pylon mighty blow has got to be a real uh, pain for anyone to face. Even though he only has one kill inflicted, but he has 22 injuries inflicted. That's insane. Alright. And let's take a look at the others. So just a couple of blodge elves and then a wrestling kicker. Oh man, kickers. I love kickers on the dark elf team. But I don't know about wrestling. Wrestling can be a, quite a trick, though. That's for sure. And... Doo -doo -doo -doo. There they are. Medicinal Carrot. Playing dice with the universe. That's a pretty good motto. Alright, so block on the werewolf. That's excellent. And... The ghoul is still blodge and alive, and a dirty player zombie, so that's shaping up where you want him to be. I mean, if you're going to have a level, that's the one most people take, right? Flesh Golem's still doing nothing so far, it looks like. So not bad uh, progression. 13 men on the field. I assume you kick anything that hits the floor, whether it's with the dirty player or not. And I backed out too far. That's Division 5A. Here we go, 5C. Let's take a look at the last game, which is a 1-0 to Mount Grimfang Thunderers. So the dwarves over three cans minus one. Three cans minus one. High elf team. Yeah, I assumed that this was going to be a rough one. And we didn't look at the history, so let's go ahead and do that. One pass, four armor breaks versus... Oh, they're not... Wait a minute. I'm on the wrong game. Let's try that again. One armor break, one death. One pass. Oh, and the thrower got injured. Only a smashed hips. Smashed hips, a miss next game. Good grief. Smashed hand, okay. About to say. 16 armor breaks, one touchdown, and an expulsion. So, Dirty Dwarves smashing people with with their mug. 35 blocks to 21. 
four, five, six, seven removals, four KOs, two injuries, and one kill inflicted. Yeah, everyone says how high elves are supposed to have the better armor, and it makes a difference, and it didn't today. That's pretty brutal. Uh, the dwarves dodging four out of six. That's about right. Going for it, three out of 15 failed. N not bad, not bad at all. Um... The bribe failed. That's kind of funny. I know that probably not to you, but to me, that's hilarious. Uh, armor only had one fail. That's about right for dwarves. I mean, you pick up 50-50 and catching three. So dwarving passing or handoff probably, considering there were no passes. So yeah, just handoffs. And... I mean, realistically, every one of these is pretty much uh, someone down and someone down. Defender stumbles, so all of that's bad for anyone, much less elves. Let's see how bad it was for the elves. Their armor held 50-50. That seems like uh, that's wrong. I mean, it should be a little bit better with an armor 8. Uh, pick up one fail out of three. I'm going to assume you were trying to pick that up out of a tackle zone. Dodging actually pretty well considering you got a team full of tackle. So, uh, wake up. I, mean, I don't think I'd want to get back on the field against dwarves either, so I can't really blame that. Uh, GFI six. Wait. So, three out of 15 and one out of seven. You guys were really running. And a 50-50 pass. Hmm. So, Skullapalooza, kind of. And then both downs probably do you no good. So I'm going to just assume that that's 19 fails against 19 passing. Or successful ones. So, getting into a fist fight with dwarves is just never, never a good idea. Alright, let's take a look at, uh, since we're here at 3 cans minus 1, let's take a look at their team. So the thrower is going to sit out next game, and they had a death, so they're missing somebody. But you still got the uh, agility up, so he can be backup quarterback if need be. And two catchers that are still alive, and the two blitzers. Blitzers has a vanity pass, I like it. Um, not enough to get another player, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, so you're going to end up with two extra... Loners, so that's 140. Team values, 1240. Depending on who you have to face. Let's take a quick look at the dwarves. Dwarves are probably steamrolling right through. Right, so three guard. A blitzer with a mighty blow. A troll slayer who is not dead. So, troll slayer is not dead, is doing great. Got a runner who has block. And another runner waiting to level up. So, yeah, this dwarf team, you're not going to see a lot of fast growth, but you're going to see steady. Let's take a look at week two and see what's coming up. The children of Hell Pit are going against the swords. So, the chaos against the underworld Denzins. Chaos has got a bit beat up on them, so hopefully this will be a, a, a growing game. I mean, realistically, uh, against, against, against a team of half goblins and half rats. You think the Chaos is going to have a bit of an advantage, and since they do have the Minotaur to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Troll, I think the Hell Pit's going to have a rough day. Now, the Hell Pit does have Mighty Blow and Claw, so Chaos Warriors and Beastmen are not as protected as they might have been. Second game is going to be Dark Souls against Pen is Mightier, so Dark Elves against Bretonians. Bretonians normally are going to have bit of the uh, bash options against elves. However, dark elves do have four blitzers, so and a wrestler. So they got their own uh, got their own lineman there with wrestle. Ah, this one's really going to be tough. It's I think this one's going to come down to dice and maybe kickoff events, of course. Spits and swallows versus three cans minus one. High elves versus Nurgle. 
Well, High Elves do have the ability to pass... No, they're passers out. Never mind that. Um, the Agility 5 is going to be able to ignore at least one of the uh, disturbing presence zones, realistically. Uh, so, catching the ball or passing the ball in that, that Agility 5 guy. And with no tackle, your dodge is really going to work to your advantage. So, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. With three loner rotters coming in, he's going to have a very low TV compared to you, I do believe. So he's going to end up with some bribes or maybe even a uh, star player. And then the dwarves up against spooky action activistic. Oh, I hate that word. So dwarves against necro. Slow versus slow. Two players with Claw that can make Dwarf Armor cheese, not bad. And they're going to have a hard time pushing uh, the Flesh Golems around, considering they have Stand Firm. Um, I think Dwarves will probably be able to hold their own, but if one Dwarf goes down and that Dirty Playing Zombie gets to swarm him, you might see a few surprise injuries you weren't planning. So... Maybe an interesting week to see develop. Honestly, I think this one's going to end up in a tie. Either a 1-1 or a 0-0. I do think that the Chaos team is probably going to pull the one from the Underworld Denzins. It's not going to be a cakewalk, but I do think you're going to get it. Uh, I, this one's going to be, like I said, this one's up for grabs for dice. If I have to pick, I'm picking the Dark Elves because favoritism. And then High Elves versus Spits and Swallow. Spits and Swallow was Nurgle. That one, ooh. Honestly, I want the Elves to win, but I think Nurgle is going to hold it. Mr. Christie's a really good player. And no offense to uh, the High Elf coach of Hindi. Uh, him and his, I believe, two cans. Oh, three cans minus one. Got it. Ha ha. All right. So we will see you guys next week. And thanks, Cindy, for the pun.